Hi, I'm Willem Boots. Being a good neighbor, what does that mean? So as a coffee roaster, in my opinion, besides being in the job of creating great coffee, roasting great coffee, you also have um, a, a task as a roaster to think about how your activity as roaster impacts your environment and your other there are people around you. And so this is the aspect of being a good neighbor. So what does that mean? So when we roast coffee, we produce smoke and odors. And coffee roasting smoke, especially when you roast dark, and there are still quite a few roasters in this world that roast quite dark, or some of their coffees they roast, they do roast dark. So when we roast dark, we produce significant more smoke. And as a result, we will also produce significantly more odors. Basically, coffee roasting smoke is a massive collection of dust particles that you're sending out into the atmosphere. And Coffee roasting smoke, unfortunately, is also a contributor to what we perceive as the impact of climate change. Because that CO2, that carbon dioxide that we send out into the open, definitely contributes to that. And apart from that, the smoke, as I mentioned, being a massive collection of dust particles, we also breathe this in, unless we really start thinking about how to deal with this, how to clean this, how to purify this air that we contaminate. And that's what I wanted to talk about specifically. So, so what ways are there to, to deal with coffee roasting smoke and how, to, how can we be a good neighbor? Now, first and for all, there is the option of not doing anything. That's not always a good way to go because you're not only going to have an impact on your neighbor's quality of life, but you also might get a knock on the door by an inspector who comes and makes you aware that you're not following regulations. The other next option, which is an option that takes care of the problem, but it creates more problems, is the afterburner. This is a massive incinerator that uses a lot of carbon fuels. It wastes a lot of energy to deal with your smoke. Very expensive, expensive to install. It's noisy. It um, creates massive amounts of CO2 that help um, accelerate climate change even more. Then there is the option of using an electrostatic filter. These are filters that give some static charge to these um, smoke particles and they collect them. The upside is it works reasonably well. The downside is cleaning is very um, time consuming and becomes expensive. Time is money. And these electrostatic filters require, after some, some time, they require new inserts which are very costly. And then there is the vortex. The vortex is basically a cyclone that uses the power of atomized water particles to basically grab the smoke and the odors. And a little disclaimer, I'm one of the co-founders of the company that developed the vortex eco filter. This company is called Vortex Clean Air Systems. And vortex has been quite successful in dealing with smoke and odors with roasters up to 15 kilos currently. And Vortex is working on creating bigger systems for this, for bigger roasters. Then there are um, catalytic afterburners. Some roaster manufacturers use these. These are more costly, very expensive to maintain, um, very bulky in size, not really a viable option. And I would say, in summary, these are the three key solutions that we can find. There are also some inline 
exhaust stack filters. They're not really effective because they clog up the airstream in your exhaust stack. So I would say in general, being a good neighbor requires you to think of all these options and I wish you good luck in finding the best solution for you. Before I leave, I would like to emphasize that we have at coffeecourses.com, we have free video content where you can do some study on your own, but you can basically sign up for Coffee Pro, which is the industry's most comprehensive resource to do online learning on coffee techniques, roasting, cupping, quality management, and much, much more. Coffee Pro can be found at coffeecourses.com. Hopefully, we'll see you there.